Hey there, Beleaguer DMs. I'm Pruitt. This is Jim Davis. And we feel your pain. We get the comments. Your players just don't care. Well, we're going to go through today's episode on five reasons why your players don't give a shit, but more importantly, what you can do about it. So let's get to it. This episode is brought to you by The Devil Made Us Do It from Monty Cook Games. Pull off the perfect heist by bending reality in this trio of games with absolutely no prep. For real, your characters are master thieves from the future who can actually lie to reality, changing it in small ways. But someone else is taking reality apart, and only you can prevent that. This game is perfect for any table that loves heists, low prep games, and fast paced creative play. It's perfect for one shots, but the meta plot lines make for great campaigns too. And because it's Monty Cook, you know that it's gonna be full of weird sci-fi awesomeness that your table will remember forever. Back it on Kickstarter now, link in the comments and description. All right, Jim, let's, uh, mm -hmm. let's, let's help out uh, some tables out there to Make sure that players uh, aren't bored, that they stay engaged, that you know they don't resort to some some bad habits or bad behaviors. You know, sure, it's just, yeah. you know, let's, let's so misbehaving let, players. Yeah, that you know, mm. I mean, they 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 might be brown coats, but like at the table, <laughs> they shouldn't aim to misbehave. Is what we're saying, and so nice. <laughs> so yeah, thank you. I'm proud of them. Um, so. Let's talk about some some reasons why players aren't engaged. Like, and we yeah. did a few shows a few months back about it, but this is more mm -hmm, about mm -hmm. uh, this. Uh, this is we're trying to do the the WebMD kind of thing for our web DM. Yeah. Let's let's diagnose and treat this problem. But yeah, exactly. Yeah, the the shows back in uh, I believe they were in February. The how to make your players more engaged and how to be an engaged player. Like, those are sort of. The, the treatment for many of these, but it could also be that you watch those shows and you're still kind of coming up empty. Like, you know, we're, we're hoping that uh, what we're going to talk about here will help those DMs who, who want to like run a really engaging game for their players where their players are like really involved um, and like keep coming up short. You know, they're doing their best. So we've got a checklist, some five reasons why uh, your players might not be engaged. Because uh, a lot of times players don't know. And if you ask them, they they might not really be aware or think that there's like a problem uh, or something yeah. or even friction or anything you know so um, I think it's uh, <laughs> this is a this might be tough for some of the DMs out there uh, uh, in many ways uh, personally in my own DMing uh, life I've had to deal with each of these many times um, yeah and so it it can be difficult to like take a hard look at your campaign that's something's not working. Um, and you, you want it to work, but you know, you're the DM in a traditional game. Like a, a lot of this stems from, uh, from you. So, uh, let's get to it. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, first one here has to deal with agency. Uh, cause, because if players feel like they have no say in how the game goes or is set up, like why, like, why should I care Yeah, as the player? Yeah. Why should I care? Yeah. And like, th this is one of those where I I've seen this from both player side and DM side. And like, it might not even be like uh, on that level for the player. Right. It could just be that they understand that there's like what they do might not matter or, or no matter what they do, the same thing happens. That's a lot of times when DMs resort to a lot of heavy illusionism uh, or, or fudging the dice or things like that that over the long term it creates a sense in the player that like what I do doesn't matter and therefore I can just show up I, I'm gonna roll dice when I when I need to or a lot of times mm -hmm. it's like combat is the one area where maybe it matters unless the GM's also fudging die rolls and padding out HP's you know totals or, or something like that um, and and so that players start feeling like they don't have a sense of ownership or influence in the game and therefore anything that happens is fine acceptable like a lot of times you'll you'll get to a point in these campaigns where a decision needs to be made and, and maybe the dm's trying to like offer some sort of agency or something like that but because they haven't had a large degree of it up until that point and crucially like no one's really being vocal 
ab about it or talking about it or yeah. acknowledging it that it leads to this moment of frustration where the dm's like i tried every time i try to give them a choice they take forever to make one and they can't settle on anything and it, it leads to these moments where they're spinning their wheels and this and that and the other and it's like you've got to lay the foundation for agency early and often um you've got to reaffirm that they have influence in the campaign world uh, yeah because if it's not something that is uh baked into the campaign if they don't see that from the beginning and consistently then they're not going to use those muscles right like they're not yeah. going to be like <laughs> I, I, I can't decide what the word is. I would, I would say not emotionally mature enough, but like, you know, their PCs aren't mature enough mm -hmm. in the world to, because they're not used to it. Like if, if, yeah, if yeah. all of a sudden or, you yeah. finally give them a decision to make and it's halfway through the campaign, well, that can just, oh my God, like everything rides on this. We finally get to make a decision, guys. What do we do? I yeah. don't know. I don't want to screw it up. And it's like, well, have right, they not right. made 20 decisions before this that they yeah, most of them are okay. They screwed up a few. They learned some things along the way. Like that's the way it's supposed to be, right? Right, right. Yeah. If you're really, if you're really letting the players take agency, then them doing things like engaging in what might be considered murder hobo play style, like killing an NPC that had vital information for them, could just be mistakes of new players, or 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 just maybe not even mistakes. Just like that night, they weren't. They were just not feeling it. And mm -hmm. what you got to learn as a DM is like to let those moments just roll by without being too disruptive to your, to your players. Like, so I'm going to tell this story, uh, cause it's funny, <laughs> uh, I'm in a game super casual. Uh, I'm not going to name any names, but, uh, a, a few uh, months back, um, we were in this moment, we're in town and everybody's kind of split up doing their own thing. And a group of some of the PCs went into a, a bakery or something. I wasn't with them, so I wasn't quite paying attention to these scenes. And long story short, there ends up being a fight breakout and the law of enforcement of the town's involved. And one of the PCs kills someone, maybe a cop, maybe not this kind of a modern-ish uh, sci-fi type setting. And it just creates this huge riot with like three quarters of the party involved and wanted. And, and it, but it was one of those moments where the, inc the inciting incident, it was interesting to watch as like a third party because it's like player says something, DM responds, and we're very quickly in like what seems like an escalation. But because I'm yeah. all, we're playing with people who are mature, they're, they're veteran gamers, this is just a, a hiccup, and the game continued. We don't go back to that town. Well, my character can because they are implicated in the murder or riot. But <laughs> like, you could see that moment being like, and I've had experiences like that where that broke down. Like player and DM would just start arguing. The game would disintegrate. That the yeah. DM would wanted one thing out of that encounter and the player wanted another. And whereas this felt more like an accident, we sort of like slipped into it. And everything was fine. We just accept that that's part of the... Sometimes when we play, these things happen. Um, but it was also one of those things where at the end of the session, the DM was like, hey, I'd like to take a minute to talk about that. Do you guys think I handled it well? Is that okay? What do we think should... Where should we go from here? And we kind of talked about what, what it would be like to go from there. And we have not visited that town since and have gotten involved in other adventures and haven't had a moment like that at all since. And that's because we can decide where we want to go and what we want to do. And our team is willing to roll with that and adapt mm -hmm. to it instead of sticking with a preset outcome. And it's, it's, yeah, it's, it works, you know, just uh, rolling with the punches. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, if you find yourself in uh, stuck in predetermined outcomes in your games and you want to exert some agency over, over your uh, skill set, why don't you pop on over to Patreon you uh, follow us over there and you get a podcast every week, hour and a half. We talk about a lot of stuff, we give a lot of advice, a lot of inspiration. Some of it could help your game out. So why don't you try that out? <laughs> um, so next, uh, this is something that I, I know this has happened to me as a player and it can, it can cause all sorts of behavior. But when you're in that moment of where you're supposed to be making a decision, except you don't know what to do. Like when you're confused right. as to the clues that are given or even just the description, you know, if it's in a box, in a hole, under a tarp, in a, you know, like it's just one of those things that can, you know, instead of just talking it through, sometimes players can just act 
and say, screw yeah. it, I'm just going to do this. And, and the DM's like, yeah. is that your final answer? And everybody else is the tables, you know, looking mm-hmm. back and mm-hmm. forth. And they're like, yes. And, you know, yeah. can yeah. derail the game. You know, certainly. And, and bewilderment and confusion often leads to things like over planning on, you know, oh, yeah. the, the player's part of like, we got to account for everything because we don't know. But it, OK, well, what about this? You know, that there's that other mm-hmm. thing. And a lot of times it's from a, a mismatch between how the DM uh, understands their campaign and, and the events in it and how the players understand it. And if you never ask your players to sort of describe the campaign to you from their point of view, who are the baddies? What are we fighting against? Where are we in the game world? And, you know, that kind of thing. Like, it's enlightening what the players pick up on, what they don't, what what flies right over their head that you think is super obvious, and what things that they picked up on and think are significant that you're like, that is utterly meaningless, you know? And it's helpful to get that feedback because this can happen. Bewilderment and confusion can happen in a linear game. It can happen in an open world game. It, it can happen as a result of just tiredness and time since last played. Like, this is why asking for clarification, this is why, you know, updating the players, you know, recap uh, at the beginning of every session. Mm-hmm. All of that is helpful. Anytime you're doing an investigation type scenario or a mystery type scenario, have the information that they've learned available for them at hand in a handout or to read. Don't keep this stuff hidden. It's it's so mm-hmm. easy for players to get confused in a game world and, and feel like they don't know what's going on and therefore they can't make a decision because you think you've got to be stingy with information and hold secrets. And you don't. You need to be generous with information. Give yeah. them Give them as much as they ask for. Uh, and with, you know, as long as it seems, uh, easily accessible and if it's not mm-hmm. easily accessible, tell them the pathway to get to it or at least one pathway. You know. Oh, definitely. And, uh, something, one of my favorite things, uh, in my favorite games, uh, that GMs, DMs do is, uh, offer experience for the players to do the recap because it, it does two of those things. Yeah, you have a recap yeah. for everybody, but also you're having a player describe back to you the events of last session so you can see what they pick up on and like what is left behind. Uh, and, and by the way, you're offering XP for it. So you're literally offering XP to anyone who's willing to pay attention and just recap what happened. And mm, mm. It's, it, it, it covers a lot of things. You're, you're literally fostering engagement <laughs> with <laughs> yeah, a reward, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, but but it's, it, I, I will say, like uh, in our samurai game that we do, every session, somebody gets to do a recap and they get an XP for it. You know, yeah. uh, and, uh, and so, you know, I, I know I, like, I used to always be the note taker, so I would always have my notes available. Uh, and in my own home game, like I, it's one of the things that I'm trying to do and I'm uh, so far, we're like five, four sessions in and, you know, mm-hmm. within a few days I have the full recap of the session that they have access to. It's a Google doc. It's just like my general, like third person narrative sure. of what happened in the adventure. Uh, and you know, they can read it anytime and it's there for them. And so I just, yeah, I think yeah. that that's also something that can be done. I think, yeah, I think making that kind of thing accessible is, is interesting for, for like keeping the players in the loop of all the events of play. I I go back and forth on like whose log of the session is like primary, if that makes any sense. Like mm-hmm. for me when I look at it, I like I like to consider the player's record of a session to be the primary sort of source for that campaign. Oh, because yeah. they're the players in it, they're the ones engaging with the events of 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 the fiction and playing out these scenarios and the like. And so I all I inherently know more about the world and what's going on and motivations. I don't want to nudge in any particular direction. So I'm going to look at the player's recap of it, but having my document available or a document available that has like a record of what happened because I know so much is invaluable to the PCs because they can go back and look and go, okay, that was that person's name. That's where this place was. Mm-hmm. I've worked two weeks since we last played. I don't remember. It, that's okay, by the way. That's yeah. perfectly fine. Uh, <laughs> it needs to be the case because that's your real life, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's not, you know, again, it doesn't have to be like a novel. Like I try to do no, three paragraphs, yeah. just the things that happened. No, like shining spotlights on specific awesome events or anything. It's just a, sure, a yeah. recounting of, you know, a recounting of the trials and tribulations of this party. And so, <laughs> uh, 
you know, I don't know. Um, yeah. So so next up here, this is uh, this is usually a big one that can a lead big to one. a lot yeah. of, of frustration and lack of engagement, which is mis- mis- mismatched play styles. Oh, yeah. You know, if, if you got an RP or a power gamer and a rules lawyer and they all walk into a tavern, <laughs> you might have a, a, a misstep on the start of the adventure. You know, you like, might. You might. It's not inevitable, <laughs> but you might. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Yeah, I think that this is this is the reason why session zeros became um, such a mantra and such like a, a do this all the time because I think like RPGs grew out of this hobby that was very war game focused that that sort of had a assumed play style with it and the game especially Advanced Dungeons and Dragons kind of like built up around that play style and then the game got popular more people start playing more people have different motivations for playing you can see this in the evolution of parallel games and other developments within D and D and other traditional uh, games, but like, it's okay to play with people who don't have the same play style. Role players and power gamers can get along and even exist within the same player, right? Uh, I Hi. I am one of those myself. We both are. <laughs> like, I play for a multitude of reasons, and in the same session, have different objectives yeah. for play. I might start playing because I'm like, I'm I'm not feeling it right now. I'm tired. But I, I'll get into it by the time we get started, and it's maybe silly at first, and then something happens, and I get serious, and you know, there's a rhythm to it. That's just be, that's fine. I think that's perfectly normal. Um, but what where the friction comes in is if like you want others to be of the place same play style, or you're running a game in one play style, and your players aren't like either aware of that or don't respect that. And so session zero is a way to sort of like get everybody on the same page. And there's like literally a a sheet uh, somewhere out there called the same page tool, which is a set of yeah. questions you can tailor to get on the same page with your with your gamers uh, or your, your players. So yeah, it's, this could be a big one. This leads to a lot of like real animosity and and broken groups and and a lot mm-hmm. of bad outcomes experiences. Yeah, and the thing is, is it doesn't have to be. Um, right. If you if you know your players and know how they engage with the game, you can craft a, a session as a as a DM that can spotlight each of those play styles simultaneously. Mm-hmm. Like, y- yeah, there it's is no to run like, a game. yeah, yeah. There's you know, if you have a power gamer, you know, and you have an RP or like, you can have an awesome combat where the bad guys are saying a lot. Like m- most fights in like movies tv books whatever they're talking mm. shit the whole time that is a social <laughs> interaction in the middle of combat you're literally engaging yeah. in two pillars of play simultaneously and now it's not maybe maybe you have the rp or who's trying to stop the combat while it's while it's going on have that let it be an actual yeah. actionable path that they can take maybe they can convince some of these people to throw down their swords i did that in a samurai game where I literally mm. use an intimidation after brutally murdering one person to get the other person to not attack me because I literally had two hit points left. And if he would, right. I would have died. But you know what? I stuck to my guns and I intimidated him and he pissed himself and threw his sword down and surrendered. That person, <laughs> that, that, that NPC is now my vassal, my pupil in that yeah. game and follows me yeah. around because I made cool. a social thing at the end of combat because yeah. I'm a power gamer that likes to role play. And there's a perfect yeah. example of it, right? That's and good, so, yeah, that, that's a good example of play for you. But yeah, I, I think that like the the friction comes in 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 the extremes. Like I have I have run across one or two players where, you know, under the right conditions, they will have their characters act in such a way that the game comes to a grinding halt. They, oh, yeah. they, you know, just they they mess with NPCs, up, uh, you know, up to and including killing them. They disregard uh, their fellow party members, uh, you know, efforts to stop them or to rein them in. Like it's one thing to have a a play to play a belligerent character or to play a character that is disruptive. It's another to have a belligerent and disruptive play style. The, the one is uh, something that you engage in and everybody is fine with it. Oh yeah, this person's character is a real asshole. That's okay because they don't, even though they're portraying them that way, they are themselves not treating us as people that way. 
and the other yeah. is disregarding the experiences of others at the table, including the DM and you know your fellow players, obviously. And so, like mm -hmm. that is a that is a hard do not pass go kind of <laughs> situation. Yeah. But I'm literally talking about in my ex personal experience that happening three or four times ever, and mm -hmm. and for the most part behaviors that look like it. Other times that players like disregard an NPC or don't seem to care about the events of a game or something is because I'm over here trying to run my gritty sword and sorcery, amoral, whatever sort of game. And they're over here playing heroic fantasy, sort yeah. of a beer and pretzel style. And that's just that that's the, no communication happening mm -hmm. there about expectations or whatever. So, um, that, that could easily be a source of disengagement and quickly can descend into like game group group breaking. I'm never going to run mm -hmm. a D and D game again, uh, kind of moments, which has yeah, happened definitely. to me three times at least. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> twice I mean, with a group pro was in, <laughs> this is true. Um, but yes, this, this can, uh, kind of dovetail into our next point, which, uh, you know, if you do have any of these, these things happening, uh, uh, boredom or being uninterested yeah. in the game yeah. it's a tough one. is a, like, it's a path to take. Some players just, you know, they all voice their opinions and be like, Hey, I'm not liking this or whatever. Some of them just start to withdraw a little bit and then yeah. you, you yeah. notice it. Uh, and sometimes they're just players that just, you know, they're those they're players bored. that they only want to combat and yeah. they just want to be yeah, disruptive. They so they're, fights. So, you know, like how, how do you handle, you know, if you have like a bored or uninterested player, uh, you know, how, to, how do you handle yeah. that? This one's a tough one. And it's, it's tough in the sense that's like a lot of times people don't know like that this is going on. It's not like a player. If you ask them directly, they'd be able to go, oh, yeah, I'm bored. I mean, they might. But it might be that you get a completely different contradictory or confusing answer out of them. And like... It, it, you know, in the sense that DMing a game is a creative act, you are drawing upon your imagination, you're trying to ignite the imagination of others, you're trying to say something worthwhile so that it's interesting to play, even if that message is just, this is a moment of heroic action in a fantasy world that I find yeah. interesting, you know, like, it's a creative act, in part, and it really really hurts it really sucks to have to face the fact that like you did your best you came up with you know the best your imagination could offer and your friends your players your whoever could care less they're not interested and they, it, it's not inspiring to them it doesn't pique their curiosity it doesn't appeal to something in them and that is to face that to to stare mm -hmm. that down and, and to to sort of look at yourself in the mirror metaphorically and go that hurts I, this is a personal thing that I've put out there that, that means a lot to me and it, it hurts that they don't engage with it, but th that's okay, number one. Uh, it's not, you know, what you're doing when you're DMing a game isn't just a creative act. It's also an act of service, an act of hospitality. You're, you yeah. are entertaining. You are, you are promising that you're going to uh, engage with another person's interests and pique them and and draw them in say i i see you i hear what you're saying i i want to reach out to you you don't i don't you shouldn't have to do that much work <laughs> like i want to reel you in and make it enticing um and that means you got to listen to your players you got to be invested in them as as people and and uh and and like understand that your tastes aren't gonna be the same and flexibility is uh is key yeah m most definitely um Yes, I love I love the the staring into the abyss of attention analogy, and it stares back into you. It's like I mean, I I I am. It's tough. It's it's really tough. There have been times when I've like I'm looking at my my baby, you know, metaphorically, and like I love this thing I've built because I've spent hours and hours and hours with it. But in campaign after campaign or whatever, you know, session after session, my players just don't seem to care. Yeah, I, you know that's not their that's, fault. They haven't done anything wrong. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's that's why I started doing questionnaires to find out what yeah. players yes. like, what they engage with, like what parts of a particular yeah. genre that entice them, so that I yeah. can literally go and lift, change, <laughs> file off the serial numbers of that encounter, <laughs> put a different, yeah. enemy, you know, whatever it takes, yeah. put them in that People same love situation. To see things they recognize in a game. 
They love yeah. to be in situations they've seen and other in books and movies and things. They'd be like, oh, this is awesome. Who's like that one time this and is... that one thing, except I got to yeah. be it. I got to do it. Except yeah. I got to do it my way. You know, mm. like, you know. Um, yeah, it's badass. Thanks, yeah. Frank. Um, so anyway. <laughs> Uh, and let's go to our last point here, uh, yeah. because we don't have this problem here, uh, but lack of direction or urgency, which this is mm, a big yeah. thing. And this is a lot of times, this, this is, is on the sandbox. DM. This is on the DM specifically, uh, usually like mm -hmm. as far as making sure that the right clues are given and that pacing is, is kept up, uh, the yeah. way it should be. And if it's not, you know, you're going to have a bunch of players sitting around not knowing what to do and not knowing that the clock is ticking, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the, the sort of lack of direction and urgency is at least it's sort of spinning wheels. A lot of times this happens in a sandbox when there's like too many open-ended quests going on or like mm -hmm. an, an accumulation of consequences. Like nothing seems to be resolved. The same enemies, the same conflicts keep recurring over and over that's an easy trap to fall into as a DM. Once you realize that the consequences of one action can spur the next conflict and, and keep a game going for a long time, it, it can become addictive and, and you hesitate to like resolve anything because then you've cut off that source of, of momentum. But sometimes you need to cut it off. Sometimes an NPC needs to stay dead. A conflict needs to stay resolved to keep yeah. the board from getting cluttered, you know, to, to keep their quest log from <laughs> becoming unmanageable. <laughs> Yeah, you're not trying to sell comic books here. You don't need to keep bringing the same people back. I mean, <laughs> right, once yeah. or twice is okay, right? Like once bringing or twice them back, is fine, like yeah. it's fine. Yeah. It's a great surprise, you know. I mean, especially if they get away and you, they know they're alive. Okay, they'll be back. And then you do yeah, the yeah. oh, we killed them, and then they come back anyway. But after that, right, like right. if your players seek out to like destroy something or an NPC, and they do, don't bring them back again. Like, yeah, don't. <laughs> don't worry about it. Yeah. So it's, it's important because it pacing and, and the, the sort of momentum of a campaign from session to session and within a session is, yeah. is a balancing act and it, there's no hard and fast rule for it. Uh, you know, a lot of people draw on that, uh, that noir, uh, adage of like the bad guy breaks down the door and starts shooting up the place, you know? But that's like like a lot of adages that become uh, sort of common wisdom. It, it leaves a lot of nuance out where it's like, yeah, but that bad guy has to be connected to something worthwhile. That that bad guy needs to have be in part of the context. This is essentially a bad wandering encounter, right? Like yep. if you're literally just sitting somewhere and someone comes in and starts fighting you and then you fight them and then that's it, that's, has n that's not a good way to get the players engaged. So having something that like disturbs the status quo and gets get something moving needs to be connected to something bigger to suggest further action and momentum and, and connection and so you want a healthy balance between ongoing conflicts that you're using to build momentum and new conflicts that come in to replace ones that are resolved once a conflict goes stale you got to throw it out you got to resolve it even if it's just a matter of the enemy sends a clear message that they are not going to mess with you anymore and, and, you know, they are out of your life entirely. <laughs> you were bad news to them <laughs> uh, and, and they don't want any more uh, or, you know, some other sort of like uh, more, uh, uh, you know, more definitive resolution. Um, and then you bring in new stuff. This is where your own ideas of what's interesting and engaging can come in stuff from the setting you haven't brought in yet stuff from players backgrounds and choices that you haven't had a chance to use like weaving all of those things together you don't you don't just cater to the pc's desires and interests if you did that it's just wish fulfillment and there's algorithms that can handle that better you're there to synthesize their interests and choices and desires and goals with your own and create something new and engaging with that that has enough that's interesting for them but then you're also including enough that's new that there's genuine discoveries and surprises. Right. And that's what you want to do. And you want to present that in a way that leaves them time to enjoy it at their own pace, but that the minute it gets repetitive or starts to bog down, which is uh, something that they need to tell you and you need to learn to read. That's when you, you introduce one of these things and, and move the scene along. Um, cause a lot of DMS, I think, uh, try to like hurry things along in the interest of a fast pace. And then they're not giving the players time to linger. Uh, and at the other end of that is the, 
the scene was over a long time ago. We can move on. We've all said, yes, we're, we're done here. Nothing else to do. And we just did mm-hmm. another round of, well, what do you guys want to do? Well, what do you guys want to do? That's a DM spinning their wheels, by the way. Yeah. They don't tell you, but that's a DM stalling for time uh, and hoping mm-hmm. that the players come up with something. Um, yeah. it's, it's time to move on. Time to do the next thing. Yeah, when <laughs> Even if it means ending the session and, early. <laughs> yeah, when you're sitting there and they're like, my sword and my bow and my axe, and then they're like, and my sword. Yep. Can we get and, going? My Are we bow. We're gonna, like, yep. <laughs> my axe. Like, yep. I bought all that stuff. I, I'm ready to yeah. adventure. DM, I, I'm here for the adventure I, I signed up for. Um, so yeah. yeah, that that's one of those things where if it seems like that, you know, that you as a DM have introduced a lot, the board's cluttered. Doesn't they don't know where to go? They don't know what to do. They're not confused about it. They just can't make a choice. This is mm-hmm. the time to cut some stuff away and introduce a sense of urgency and direction uh, to the game, at least for a little bit. Most, get them, get them started. Yeah, yeah most, most definitely. Um, and if you need a, a sense of urgency and direction, we'd like to direct you up here to this link uh, because our Kickstarter pre-order page is up. Uh, so you can still get the new book uh, when it, when, you know, when it's available. Uh, so check the link there. I think it's down here also, uh, but also, Make sure you like, subscribe, all of those things to help the algorithm out because that helps us out. Uh, But we'll see you next week. Love you. So, okay, so this here's the deal. We're in this town, and after we're we're like new new to the area, right? We need to gear up and everything. And uh, for some reason, they wanted to visit a bakery. I think there was like a quest that we saw on like a, a Craigslist type thing for it. There, there was a quest. There was a quest. Okay, thank you. There was a quest, and so they get there, and the NPCs kind of like gives them some guff, and then the PC gives guff back, and then that escalates. And then the the NPC calls the, the law enforcement, and the law enforcement's have these sticks that make you nauseous and puke, and and all this yeah. other grotesque Six stuff. Six sticks, and yeah. PCs got their hands on one of them and hit the business owner with it. Several of the cops. I Everyone, did. it was yes, that was you. I critted. Um, <laughs> that's good. And so, yeah, they were just shitting and puking all over the place this delicate boutique cake store uh you know it was it really was terrifying and watching it go down was sort of like this is kind of like a train wreck in slow motion but i don't want to stop playing like no my my guy heads away from the riot that's bad news why would i do that i'm trying to earn some money to buy adventuring gear she's to go never going to be able to sell people. a cake again She's never going to be able to sell a cake again. We can't visit that town again. That's not the worst we've done. We've pissed off several criminal uh, zealots. Anyway, it's It's the worst I've done. Yeah, 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 easily. That was your character that did that. Yeah. Emma's character was the one that killed them. No, I didn't kill anybody. I just made her shit. Just made her shit. Just (laughs) made it all shit. Yep. (laughs) 